Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with not so much a full deck tech, but a deck variant for you. This is Miramad Phantasm. Shoutouts to Nicholas Jetner, aka, I think your name is 097. He spells zero out, so Z E R O, and then he gives us nine in Roman numerals, and then seven in Indo Arabic numerals, so. In any case, you, by virtue of supporting enough on Patreon, get your uh, deck. You get your uh, deck that's built around a single card every month. And this month, it's Miramad Phantasm, which is <laughs> interesting, to be sure. I wanted to make something original, obviously. I wanted to make a homebrew that used this card. And the first thing I thought of was apparently something that a million other people, approximately a million other people, had thought of, which is Seance comboing this with Seance and Laboratory Maniac. But since that horse had already been beaten to death, I wonder if that's an expression that's used anywhere else in the world. Since that idea had already been tried, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to give you your money's worth, not just a rehashing of a deck that we've already seen, something you can just find on MGG St Salvation. So, I kind of went original. The actual deck itself is pretty far from original to be sure, but the use of Miramad Phantasm is unique. We're actually going to add this card into a Pyromancer Ascension deck. And if you don't know what that is, let me give you a little bit of context. So, the first thing that we do, and I'm not going to show every single card, these are all pretty common. You can look at Pyromancer Ascension or Pyromancer Storm on MTG Top 8, and you can get an idea for what this deck does um, fairly readily. So we're just going to play a bunch of cantrips. Here's Gitaxian Probe, here's Four Serum Visions, and all of these are going to, well, I say all. I'll tell you when we stop getting to four ofs. Uh, there's Sleight of Hand. I'll fix them in just a second. There's Thought Scour with, I'm going to talk about Peak in a minute. You'll see why. Uh, then we have Metamorphose. Draw and Mana. Great card. Uh, Desperate Ravings with Seabion. I'm going to talk about you in just a minute. Uh, and then we have our, uh, I guess you'd say our big storm enablers. We have Desperate Ritual and Pyretic Ritual. Uh, four of each. Put these together with Manamorphose and you get uh, blue mana that allows us to keep going and going and going and going. And yeah, it's a... Uh, it, it gives the deck ridiculous consistency, even despite this low number of lands that it has. It's what enables this deck to be a storm deck. It's what enables it to be competitive, so on and so forth. I could sing its praises all day long. Uh, so these are your base. Uh, cantrip, 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 mana, cantrip, and mana. And this is also cantrip. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much, that's the base of it. You're going to be digging to find your, you know, enough lands and the win conditions. Now, in a typical list, in a typical Pyromancer Storm list, you still have two Past in Flames, well, some number of Past in Flames, it may not be exactly two, uh, but the idea is that even without Pyromancer Ascension, you can still win through Past in Flames. Just give everything flashback and keep going and going and going. Uh, next you have Grape Shot. I run two, I don't know what the right number is, I think Two is what I came across most. I'm sure that there's a good reason for that, so I'm sticking with two. And then we have four Goblin Electromancers. They just make it where it's that much easier to... Uh, well, I mean, every, it reduces the cost of actually not, e not any of the first four. But you, 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 you. It reduces the cost enough that it makes it easier, especially if you're only going off with Past in Flames and without Pyromancer Ascension it makes that all the more doable. So that's the win condition that you normally have. Uh, what you would also include in a typical Pyromancer Storm deck is, of course, the namesake Pyromancer Ascension. We aren't running that. Uh, I guess you can kind of consider this a little bit of a budget version, uh, because Pyromancer's Ascension, that's what, like nine dollars now? I may be mistaken about exactly how much it's worth. No, it's not that much. In any case, uh, the cards with which we're replacing them are much cheaper. Um, 
and also they give the deck a little bit more resiliency, and I'll explain that in just a moment. I'm not saying it's better necessarily, but, well, you'll see. So, we're replacing four Pyromancer Ascension with three, maybe four cards. Um, obviously Mirror Mad Phantasm. Uh, what this allows us to do is <laughs> shuffle it into our library, and then reveal cards from the top until we hit Mirror Mad Phantasm. It's the only one, so odds are we're going to mill a significant amount into our uh, into our graveyard. Now, of course, there's a chance that this could be the very next card and you didn't get anything, or it could be the very bottom card and you get the whole deck. Uh, because of that, we actually run a one of, and I know you've totally seen this card before, Hostility. Actually, maybe an EDH. I do see this in EDH every now and then. Uh, it does provide the deck with an alternate win condition, a 6-mana six 6-6 six, six with haste, that turns... You, you don't have to grape shot for quite as much to get a bunch of 3-1s. Uh, but actually what we care about is that if you do mill your entire deck into your graveyard, hostility will shuffle itself back in so that you still have one card left. And the reason that that's important is because if you need to cast Mana Mor Morphos for blue mana, you need to draw a card. So hostility will keep you from losing the game. Uh, and then, and this is why we run it. This is why we do what we do. Psychic Spiral. You know, from Ravnica. Return to Ravnica. I, I have tried brewing with this card in Turbo Fog, and now we're putting it in here. So the idea is, mill a lot of your deck, um, ideally all of it, and enable a Psychic Spiral kill. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, it's important to note, when I say that it gives the deck more resiliency, what I mean is that you can kill with Storm, uh, but if you're playing a normal Pyromancer Ascension deck, you have to kill with Storm. Uh, you don't really have a way around that. This gives you a way to win that involves casting one spell on a given turn. Uh, obviously, Mirror Mad Phantasm's ability is just that, an ability. Uh, but if you can you know, get to the point where you... Even if you've milled your entire deck, on your upkeep, cast Psychic Spiral. Uh, if you can force your opponent to draw at that point, actually, now that I'm looking at it, none of these allow your opponent to draw a card. Well, never mind. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing that on your opponent's turn then, on your turn. Uh, that's a drag, I just realized. Well, in any case, uh, it does give you the ability to kill by only having cast one spell on a given turn. Now, that's only three, and we're replacing four Pyromancer Ascension, so what do we use the other one for? Uh, you could add a land to improve the consistency of the deck, because one of its weaknesses is mulliganing. You know, it doesn't run too many, typically. Uh, I have also considered running a one of Infernal Plunge. This is sort of your Dark Ritual. It produces red mana, but you have to sacrifice a creature. So the reason that this comes in is, let's say you have milled your deck uh, with Mirror Mad Phantasm, but you don't have a Goblin Electromancer out. So you cast Past in Flames. Uh, if you get into a state where you have one, not two mana, if you have two mana, that's fine, you cast Desperate or Pyretic. But if you have one mana, you cast Infernal Plunge, sacrificing your Mirror Mad Phantasm that came back. And that's what lets you get the ball rolling. Rolling, excuse me. It's sort of a failsafe, right? If you just happen to have not quite enough mana, then Infernal Plunge is where you are. Now, of course, it's no different uh, from these two, if Electromancer is out, except that it makes you sacrifice a creature, so feel free to not run it. I run it just as a one-of, just in case I get into that state. You could also just put in another land. Now, I see these run typically 16 or 17 lands. This runs 17. We have our three steam vents, of course, as you do. You know, as you do. We have three basic islands and a one of Basic Mountain, of course. You know, you never know when that little bit of life may make the difference. And we have four Scalding Tarns, and four other Blue Fetch. Doesn't matter which it is. I prefer Misty Rainforest just because you can threaten your opponent with Ancient Grudge a little more readily, but make it whatever you want. Doesn't really matter, at least not as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then we have, to round it out, two Shivan Reefs. And then correct it, as you do. And so this is the deck.
This is the Pyromancer, or I guess Mirror Mad Storm. Let's call it that, Mirror Mad Storm deck. Uh, it enables you to kill with Storm, but even if your opponent plays a Rule of Law or an Eidolon of Rhetoric, you can still kill them with Mirror Mad Phantasm Psychic Spiral. So now for the sideboard, just really quickly. Uh, for Blood Moons, uh, you know to go and fetch your islands. You can shut them down. It gives, usually, if you can get this out early enough, which thanks to the rituals, you certainly can, it buys you a lot of time, and sometimes will just lock the opponent out. Uh, next I have, I'm just going to set these right over here, I have one Echoing Truth. It just deals with whatever problem permanent you're having to work with. If they do play a Rule of Law or an Eidolon of Rhetoric or something like that, you need to get rid of it. This is how. Uh, now, this enables you to kill without Storm, but it still uses the graveyard. So how do you kill the opponent if they shut down your graveyard? Say, rest in peace or something like that. And the answer is, empty the Warrens. It still uses Storm, but it doesn't use the graveyard. And as soon as turn two, I suppose, is the earliest that you can really go off, uh, you can empty the Warrens for enough to kill them, enough to just, they won't be able to recover from that. Uh, for Lightning Bolt, deal with your Hate Bears. Uh, sometimes this is good for a little bit more reach, but mostly the Hate Bears. Spirit of the Labyrinth, um, so on and so forth. Hey, there's my ringtone. Uh, a one of Pact of Negation. I used to have this in the main board. Uh, you can give it flashback. Uh, Past and Flames can give Pact of Negation flashback, and it costs zero, so it just secures the combo. Uh, if the opponent tries to go off with Counters Magic. And then our Anti-Affinity Package. I only have two cards. I have Shatterstorm and Vandal Blast. I actually think that it might be better to run uh, two Shatterstorms. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, exactly which cards you use is up for debate. Uh, Shattering Spree is another one that you can consider. Um, but this is just... This is brutal beyond all recognition. And so is this. I don't think you usually care about... I, I, we have no artifacts in here, so Overload only targeting theirs makes no difference to us, but the fact that it can be played early may mean something, especially against artifacts that uh, aren't in it. Like, you're, you're not just going to play against the Affinity deck all the time. They'll have some random artifact that shuts you down, like... Um, hmm, that's a good question. What random artifacts shut this deck down? I can't believe that I can't think of any. Oh well. <laughs> Witch Bane Orb. No, not Witch Bane Orb. No one plays that. Um, yeah, so other cards that you can consider for the sideboard. Uh, Defense Grid is another anti-counter magic card. I mean, what can I say? It's You will go off more quickly than they will. You don't need to do anything on their turn, so on and so forth. It's perfectly fine. Um, that being said, other cards you might want to consider... You may notice that I didn't include any Dragon's Claw, and that's something that you can certainly do as well, because you will gain a ton of life, both from the Burn Player and from your own red spells. So, yeah, if you need some Burn Hate, often we could just go off more quickly than the Burn Player can, so we don't tend to care that much. But it may matter, so Dragon's Claw is where it's at against them. Otherwise, this is the deck. It's just a really quick, uh, really easy one for you. There are two things I want to talk about, just briefly. So I include Thought Scour, but I also have a peek in here. This is not really in the deck. This is just to remind me to talk about it. When you play Mirror Mad Phantasm, in this kind of deck, it does you absolutely no good at all if it ever hits the bin. So you may be tempted to not play Thought Scour and instead run something like Peak. I would suggest very, very strongly that because this is only a one of, it's okay to accidentally mill it. It's worth it to try to get the Past and Flame cards, including Past and Flame itself. Um, so all of these that you can flash back. It's worth it to get those in the graveyard. Also, it may just happen to be the case that, um, let's see, how do I put this? If you get enough cards in anyway, then you could kill them with Psychic Spiral, regardless. Even if you don't have Passing Flame, even if you don't, or even if you do have Passing Flame to get back the 
to flash back the psychic spiral. You may just be able to kill them off of that um, without having to do any mirror mad shenanigans. So peak is tempting. It's a trap, I would submit. And then the next one is, this one I'm a little bit less sure of, Desperate Ravings or Sea Beyond. Uh, same issue. If you're casting it the first time, Sea Beyond is better. It's the flashback that really puts Desperate Ravings over the top. See, you do discard a card at random from your hand, and that could be Mirror Mad Phantasm, and that's not something that you generally want to do. Sea Beyond lets you get by that a little bit, just you get to choose what you want. If you have too many lands, put one back, so on and so forth. But it doesn't have flashback, and that's the big issue. That's the concern. Uh, so maybe it's better to run Sea Beyond just so that you can keep the right card, and it does enable you to keep the Mirror Mad Phantasm, or as with Thought Scour versus Peak, it may just be worth it. You may get enough cards in your graveyard anyway that you don't mind. That all being the case, I guess that that's it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.